Hi, my name is Jane Thornthwaite and I'm the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Education. And part of my role is to engage parents about all aspects of their child's education. Today I'm here as a parent because I know how increasingly concerned parents are about what their kids are doing online with websites or apps. Parents want to know how to talk to their kids to see whether or not they're appropriate on the internet. I'm here with Jesse Miller, social media safety expert, and Teresa Campbell, the president of Safer Schools Together. Teresa was instrumental in implementing this government's erase bullying strategy, which includes a five-year training program for 15,000 educators and community partners across the province. A key component of the training program includes current information about social media, awareness, and safety. How do parents start the conversation about making the right choices online? Um, I would say you have to start within your home. We, you open up dialogue around good practices about the internet, and the parents' expectation of how their children would use the internet, and also the values of the home as it extends to the content of the internet. Um, for each parent, one website might be appropriate versus inappropriate, and some content might be of a good conversation piece for parents to have a comfortable conversation with their children. So it does start with your home, and then understanding what your uh, community is connected to, how your children are being expected to use the internet at, at school, and their influences from friends. And uh, that has to start at a younger age compared to where we used to have those conversations. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to add to that, I think the key word in that question is actually start to have those conversations. We're really at a place in time right now where we're really looking forward to seeing more parents engage with their children around their behaviors in the online world as much as we do in relationship to the outside world. I know that some parents are overwhelmed by trying to keep up with the websites or apps like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. And these parents have given up trying to keep track of what their kids are doing online. Instead, they're just hoping for the best and trusting their kids to make the right choices. Do you think that's a good strategy? Uh, trusting that our kids are going to make the best choices is not necessarily the right strategy. And for the parents who struggle to keep up with the, the trending website or application, um, by the time they become versed in, in that topic, there'll be a brand new one that their children are migrating to. Um, more and more we can talk to our kids about is the idea of, of how they're using the technology, um, what they're sharing, and exploring the ideas of building an online brand that can be looked at in the most positive way as they would expect themselves to be seen in real life. Yeah, an extension to that is also having that conversation around the nature and quantity of the images that they're also sharing online. What kind of information are we actually leaving behind on the internet and who is capturing all of that information? What is a digital footprint? And could online information about a child impact future scholarships or employment? What we do online becomes an extension of our, our real life and our actions become part of our character and, our, and people will judge that as you move forward every step along the way. Um, we are Googled and we're searched based on uh, the names that we provide on a resume and phone numbers and email addresses. So as a child builds an online brand and if it's a digital footprint or digital tattoo or whatever name we want to give it as the trends continue, um, parents have to start talking to their kids about how to use this technology to best represent their brand. And it seems odd to talk to children about brand management, but if you're entering high school and you're sharing a lot of information and all of a sudden grade 10 turns into grade 12 and you're starting to enter conversations around scholarships or even uh, job opportunities, um, we've seen children who are in grade 12 who are being um, you know, told you go into a co-op placement and you get to do something interesting. Um, those employers who are bringing a child in to get life experience and work experience are being told, no, we Googled you and this is not appropriate and you're not going to fit into our, into our structure. So more and more I think parents have to start talking to their kids about the, uh, the, the par parallels between uh, the online world and the real world. And engaging those conversations with your kids around, if I was to Google you, what would I find? And making sure that kids are aware. And I think this has to be a priority conversation we're having today with the certain use of the applications that our kids are, are engaged in right now. We're seeing kids share more images than we've ever seen before. Thanks, Jesse and Teresa. Where can parents go to learn more about what we've talked about today? Every school and province has a number of resources on their website uh, to research that as much as you can, stay in touch with your parent advisory councils and see what's available to, to, to parents online. Um, and then uh, go deeper, you know, search, uh, search a number of avenues online that are available through the province and through uh, federal and municipal police. 
And of course, there's a whole wealth of information for our parents here in British Columbia on the ErasBullying.ca website. It's a website that we're keeping current, constantly updating. So please take some time to visit the ErasBullying.ca website.